first Christmas in Ireland, and he's making a movie called The Manions of America, which is about an Irish family who got involved in the 1847 famine. He's a fine, handsome hulk of a chap, very personable and most amenable as well. Direct from Starsky and Hutch, would you welcome please, Mr. David So. Don't kick the equipment around like no. that. Only have it on hire. It has to go back on Monday, you know. <laughs> I would have thought, David, that, uh, that you're an extremely fit person, and if you weren't an actor, you might have gone into the field of athletics or professional sport. Yes? Well, uh, there was a time when I was... Uh, how, do, how did you know that? <laughs> At one time, I was planning to go into professional baseball as a pitcher. I was a... Uh, we, uh, they're called pitchers, obviously. I don't know what they're called here. <laughs> pitchers, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> uh, for the Chicago White Sox. That was back about uh, 15 years ago. And then acting came along. You, you, I don't, you, did you go into acting through any great passion in the gut to want to be an actor? I don't think right away. I think uh, early on my greatest passion was uh, to teach. I wanted to teach history. And uh, after that, it was the ministry. And after that, it was baseball. And then I think what happened was there was a moment sometime in my life when all of a sudden uh, the theater and uh, music became the most important thing. I was using the music to put myself through school, and suddenly that became uh, more important to me than the history I was studying, more important to me than the ministry. So I chose the theater. And did you have hard times as an actor? Were you ever starving? No. No, I think... Uh, uh, if you're going to do something you love doing, obviously the hard times are what make you give you the metal to go <laughs> to go on, you know. And uh, anything that comes too easy, and I guess that's the experience of a lot of people these days, either looking for something to come easier, or really not taking the challenge and and going with it. And I think, uh, oh yeah, there were some hard times, but you look back at those, and I'm sure you have too. Look back at them as as happy times and uh, times of value, enrichment. I guess when you were young and fit and able for it. That's the difference. <laughs> That's suppose, true. It's an, it's an adventure. Uh, am I right in saying that at first, when you were first offered uh, the part in Starsky and Hutch, you didn't have any great faith in the series? The series? Well, at the time, I was much more interested in uh, the purism of the theater, actually, <laughs> whatever that means. That, that did, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, 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 I never thought the show would go, I think. See, Starsky and Hutch had been written like two years prior and has been shoved into somebody's desk and had just sat there collecting dust. And... And they needed some product. They were desperate some, for some product, and the, and the producers of our show, Spelling and Goldberg, um, had a deal with a network which allowed them to do X number of films a year, and they needed to do something. And somebody pulled this thing out and said, why don't we do this? Not thinking that it would sell. And of course, none of us did either. And uh, there you have it. <laughs> And, and what has it meant to you now, I mean, to, to be so readily recognizable almost everywhere in the world means a complete lack of privacy, I presume? Well, the show, uh, the show was obviously uh, uh, a great success, and, uh, and I guess it's given me a certain amount of usable power to do some of the things that I personally want to do. But I think more importantly than that, um, and this, I don't want to sound, make this sound like a funeral speech, but <laughs> I really feel that in our world today where our major concerns have to deal with, must concern themselves with survival, and our own survival, I think the television probably has an opportunity to be the, the single most powerful medium in this world to help bring people together. And I think having that platform uh, for myself you know, has a, well, I hope I can live up to it in a way, you know, and, and bring some, some good quality entertainment, which is my primary responsibility, obviously, as an actor. But go on from that and deal with some of the issues that we have to deal with as a, as a planet. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I, I have to tell you, with somewhat an apologetic face, that RTE never took Starsky and Hutch because we objected to it, the organization as such yeah. objected to it on the grounds of violence. And oh, I yeah. know that it has been criticized everywhere sure. uh, because of its violence. How do you react to that? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I ran into a good Irish cold here. Anybody get any whiskey in the audience? <laughs> we could organize it. <laughs> we could organize it. Yeah. Any chance of a drop of the hard stuff, Maura, <laughs> if it was lying around doing nothing? No. Um, well, I, I, uh, 
I don't know. I, as far as I, my, my feelings on the violence of Starsky and Hutch, I always ask myself a very simple question. It kind of evolved out of the show. And that was, which is more violent? Is it more violent to commit an act of, of violence, such as rape or murder? Or, or is it more violent to watch something like that happen and not, be, and not do something about it? And I think there's a violence of apathy, which goes on a great deal in our society, in our Western society particularly, that I know about anyway, where people expect other people to take care of the problems, which really they have to deal with themselves. And I think, um, you know, I don't think Starsky and Hutch was any big philosophical type show. It was obviously an entertaining show and did have some violent moments in it. But I think basically that the, those two guys were trying to deal with uh, <coughs> taking care of the, of the bad for the, for the greater good. And, and, and the bad always lost out, at least. In the the bad always the, lost out, the yeah. One, yeah. And that's, you know, obviously we stepped on a lot of toes. <laughs> But I'm not so sure the toes we stepped on are the ones I'm concerned about, the Parent Teachers Association and the, the uh, Federal Communications Commission and yeah, so forth. Do you, do, you, do you think that people just get figaries about these things and make an issue of them? Is, is, would that yeah. Be? yeah, I think, uh, you know, in our country, uh, there have been a number of times in history where all of a sudden the public feels like it needs to uh, clean its conscience somehow, mm. and it goes after certain issues. Oh. You wanted whiskey? <laughs> yeah. You just got whiskey. There is Purely medicinal, of course, of let course. me assure you. Purely medicinal, it's to help. Uh, mm. Boy, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hits it, doesn't it? Sure does. I'm better already. 